Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. Recently, we did a video talking about the top camera apps on Android, and we narrowed it down to two. They were Open Camera as a free option and Cinema 4K as a paid option. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at Cinema 4K, and we're gonna do a run through of how you can set it up to get the best settings for your videos. Now, in this video, we're not gonna cover all the features, we're not gonna cover all the settings, and it's not a complete review. We're gonna cover all the settings to get the best results for your videos. So before we jump into it, the whole advantage of using these third party or aftermarket camera apps is that we have the functionality that we would have on a video camera or on a DSLR. So we can take full control over the manual settings and lock them down for the best results. So that way we're not just running on auto and letting our phones decide when to brighten the shot, when to darken the shot, and when to adjust the focus. By setting everything to manual and taking full control yourself over the video that you're outputting. So it's really important not to get overwhelmed with all the features and the settings and the whole concept of filming in manual mode and locking down all of these settings. Once you've got your head around it and once you've done it a couple of times, it'll become second nature to you and you'll get full control over your videos. All right, so here we are in Cinema 4K. The first place to start is to get your video record quality and bitrate set up first. So we'll click on settings first, and we wanna set up for the rear camera first. And we'll set our frame rate. Now you've got the choice here of a few different frame rates. There's a bit of a delay when we press the button before it updates. If you're in the US, you wanna to set to 30 frames per second. If you're in Australia or the UK, then you'll want 25 frames per second and you will want to match here the area that you're filming in so that you don't get any flickering through from any lights that you might be using in your filming. Next is the resolution, which is the quality of the video that we'll be recording. Now max it out here. If your phone is capable of recording 4K, as you can see here, UHD, this is a Google Pixel XL, so it's got a 4K camera in it for video. So you can cycle through and pick the highest quality for you, which if we go back there, that is our highest quality here. Video bitrate is the amount of data that's captured per frame per second of your video. So you can see here that it's set to 100 megabits per second. So we can cycle through those. So you have a choice of 60, 50, 40, 30, 25, 20. So how it works is the lower the megabits per second, the lower the quality, but the smaller the video size. So I'd recommend maxing that out if you've got the storage capacity in your phone. If you don't, if your phone is nearly full, then I would suggest that you remove, do a backup, take all your photos and your videos off, clear some space so that you can record in the highest quality possible. So for us here, that's 100 megabits per second. Next up is the audio source, and we've got the choice here of camcorder or microphone. So if you're gonna use an external microphone, then set it to mic. If you're gonna be using just your built-in microphone on your phone, then set it back to camcorder. Now we can choose the audio bitrate. So the same as the video bitrate, this is the quality of the audio that we'll be recording. Again, higher the number, higher the quality, larger the file size. Now I'd really recommend here that you don't go less than 128 kilobits per second. 128 is what they call CD quality. So anything less than 128, you will really start to notice the drop in quality of the audio. So for the audio, I'd recommend at least 256 kilobits per second. You can actually go higher. We can go to 320. We can even go as high as one megabit per second for audio in this app. Now for me, I think that's actually a bit of overkill, which is something I don't say too often. So I would wind that back personally to 256 kilobits per second. That would be more than enough for most situations. And if we scroll down here now, we've got a lot more settings. Stabilizing, if you want to set your stabilizer on, if your phone's got an optical image stabilizer, then you can turn it on here or you can set it to software. So the camera app actually has built-in stabilizing as well. So if your phone supports optical, I would suggest to choose optical and to leave it on optical. If it doesn't, then you can choose whether you want to use the software, the camera app to stabilize your videos for you, or if you want it totally off. 
So if you're gonna be walking around and moving around while you're recording your videos, then it's a good idea to turn stabilization on. So whether it's optical, if your phone supports it, or software, which is the camera app, which actually has built-in stabilizing capabilities, then to help reduce the camera shake and help get a smoother image, you can turn on stabilization. Now, if you're gonna be filming on a tripod like we are here, then I would suggest that you actually turn it off. Now, one of the cool features with this app is that it gives you a flat color profile. So what that means is it's recording at what would look like a washed out image so that you're actually recording more details in your videos. So that then when you're color grading your videos later in your editing, you've got more control or more creativity with what you can do with the colors and, and with the look that you wanna create for your video. So you can change the color profile here from dark only, light only, or dark plus light. So I'd recommend if you're going to be filming with a flat color profile that you leave it at dark plus light. And then the level of intensity of that color profile, you can change here. So we've got medium, high, or low. So really the settings here for the flat color profile type will only apply if you are wanting to record with that flat color profile type enabled. If you've got no interest in color correcting or really changing the look and feel of your video in your editing, then you can ignore these altogether. Personally, I like to do a little bit of color correction or adjustment with my videos. So for me, I like to set this here at medium. Noise reduction is a cool feature to help you reduce the amount of grain or digital noise in low light videos. Personally, I like to turn this noise reduction off because it's never as good as noise reduction, in my opinion, that you will find in your editing software. So if your scene is lit well and you've got enough lights there for your filming, then you shouldn't have a noisy image anyway. And if there is, then I'd suggest that you fix it in your editing software afterwards instead of here in the camera. But once again, if you're not planning on doing anything in your editing afterwards, and you're filming in dark situations, then turning on noise reduction may be a good solution for you. So exposure control is one that I would highly recommend that you leave as full manual, which means when we're filming, we can set everything to lock it down the way that we want it. Now the last setting here that you wanna check is the video orientation. So by default, this camera app doesn't rotate when you rotate your camera around. So if you've put your camera in the tripod and your video image is upside down or you'd rather record upside down, then you can change the video orientation here. Okay, so those are all the main settings that you'll want to adjust. We'll go back to the camera app now. Next up here, we've got our picture profile, whether we turn on that flat color profile or back to standard, as you can see now. So you can see without the flat profile, we're already getting a lot more colors through. So if you are going to be doing color grading later, you'd be better off with the flat color profile so that you can really tweak the blacks and the whites to get the color and look that you're after. If you're not interested in doing any color correction later, then turn off the profile and leave it on normal. For the purposes of this video, we'll leave it as normal. Next up, we'll look at our exposure adjustment, which is the next button here. And once we press that, you'll see down the bottom, we've got our ISO setting, and we've also got our exposure time, which is our shutter speed. So the first setting you should adjust here is the exposure time or your, your shutter speed. So if you're in Australia or the UK, you'll wanna set this to 50 or one over 50 to match the flickering of the lights that we have here. Or if you're in the US, you'll wanna set this to 60 or one over 60 to match the lights in your area. So we're in Australia, we'll set this to one over 50. Now you can see that's brightened up our shot a lot. So the lower the number, the brighter the shot, the higher the number, the darker the shot. Now the next adjustment we need to make is to the ISO. Now this is the lower the number, the darker the image, the higher the number, the brighter the shot. So you can see as we go 600, 800, 1000, we're getting really bright now. So if you're gonna be filming outdoors, you'll definitely wanna select a low number here. So you can see for us, 100 is looking pretty good. Now these two settings do go hand in hand, meaning that if you boost one, then you may need to drop the other one to compensate. But the one that's the most important is the shutter speed, so that there's no flickering in the videos. If you were filming outdoors, and this was a much, much brighter image, and you've got your ISO down as low as it can be, and the image is still really bright because we've got our exposure here set to 50, we can actually increase in the multiple of that number. So in Australia, we're using 50, but you could also up it to 100 to darken the shot. So it's a multiple of that number. And likewise in the States, you could also use 120 to darken the image. Now outdoors, there's a lot less chance of 
flickering from lights. So if you really find that once you've set your ISO to a low number and you've set your shutter speed to 60 or to 120, if you find that your shot is still really bright, you can increase this exposure time or shutter speed number to darken the shot down further so that it looks right. And there'll be next to no chance of flickering in your videos because you'll just be outdoors and using sunlight in most cases instead of using studio lights. So I'll put this back down now to 1 over 50. And I'll adjust the ISO back up to 100 now. So if we were to press record now, those settings are locked down. So no matter where we pick up and move our phone around to or walk around to, we've locked down our exposure or our brightness. And you can see that we're in manual mode because at the top it says ME for manual exposure. Next up, we're gonna lock down the white balance. So you can see at the moment here, AWB, auto white balance. If we press on that, that will actually lock down. It says now locked. Let's lock down our white balance at that point. So there'll be no color adjustments or blue tinge or yellow tinge coming in as any lighting changes throughout our shot. So in most cases, that's all you'll need to do because the camera will do an auto adjustment first or pick where it thinks the white balance should be. And then you can lock that setting in. If you wanna make a manual adjustment and change the colors or tweak the colors here, then press that button again and you'll get your slider down the bottom. So as you slide to the left, it'll add more blue to your shot. As you slide to the right, it'll add more orange. So you can see if we add more blue now, we're getting a cooler look. And as we slide to the other side, we're getting a much warmer image. So you can tweak this to get the shot that you're after here in camera. So if we slide this along a little bit here, you can see that it's actually starting to look more natural for the shot that it actually is. And it's also matching the cool white lights that I'm using in this room. So the last setting that we need to lock down here is the autofocus. You can see we're on autofocus because it says AF in the top corner there. So if we press on that now, then you'll see we enter manual mode. And on the slider on the bottom here, we can manually adjust the focus in and out. So an easy way to get this set right, we'll turn this back to auto at the moment. Say that we wanna focus on my hand here. The camera will automatically adjust on it at that point. If we press the auto focus button, we're locked in manual focus and that's kept our focus now at that point. So you can see if that was us sitting in front of the camera here, the hand is in focus, the background is out. So that way the phone is not gonna be making any adjustments while we're doing our filming. Then it's just a matter of pressing record and we're good to go with our videos. Now it's always a good idea to record a quick test, maybe a 10 or 20 second clip of you talking, checking the light, come back and play it back before you record your entire video to make sure that everything looks and sounds the way you want it. So there you have it. That's how you can set up Cinema 4K on Android for the best results. If you found this video helpful, we'd really appreciate a share, a thumbs up, or a comment. And check out the video linked on screen now for a full walkthrough on how you can create professional videos on Android. I'll talk to you soon.